Hello and welcome to the Tuesday, March 5th, 2024 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. In today's diary, we have sort of an old topic renewed and that's how you are capturing packets in home labs. One of the quick and dirty ways to do that is a little passive tab, which has the advantage that, well, first of all, it's cheap it's simple you can even make them yourself as shown in this diary however these simple tabs also come with some significant drawbacks most notably that they're limited to 100 megabit so even many home internet connections probably will be slowed down if you add a tab like this my own sort of preferred solutions these days if you are on a budget is a simple five port switch there are now a number of switches in the sort of you know 20 to 50 dollar price range that offer a monitor port or a span port that works quite well in a setup like this a tab for a home network typically doesn't have to be perfect and you're certainly willing to drop a couple packets here and there for a much lower price ebay also always a great source for some sort of more professional equipment but that comes with other disadvantages, like for example, that it's usually quite noisy and sometimes not easy to operate or requires special licenses. Let me have more bad news for Team City users. That's uh, the JetBrains uh, product has had a couple of vulnerabilities earlier this year, and now we have three more vulnerabilities that are allowing an unauthenticated attacker to access the Team City server as an administrator. A patch was released by JetBrains today. There is an update available that you can apply. There is also a security patch plugin that saves you of the work of doing a complete update to your Team City server. JetBrains also notes that this particular vulnerability was found and reported by Rapid7 and according to Rapid7's vulnerability disclosure policy, they will uh, publish steps to replicate the vulnerability within 24 hours. So essentially, that's how much time you have to apply this patch before you'll likely see some exploits being released in the wild. And GitHub is taking additional steps to make it more difficult to accidentally publish uh, secrets in your uh, GitHub repository. It all started last year when GitHub implemented push protections and made them available to all of its users. But what's changing now is that push protections will be enabled by default. So if you are trying to push a commit to GitHub that contains uh, secrets like API keys and the like, then uh, the push will be blocked. You will see an alert and then you have the option to either remove the sensitive data or specifically overwrite push protection. Now, how does GitHub know that you are sending secret data to GitHub? They're not just looking at the format of the data itself. So it's not that, let's say, a 40-digit hex number, which is sort of what a lot of these API keys look like, will be blocked. They're also looking for names that are using with that. So for example, one name that I'm seeing here in GitHub published a list with all of these names, maxmind underscore license under score key for the MaxMinds GeoIP database. That would be sort of one string that would be considered if associated with a string that's formatted like a MaxMind API key that would be blocked. And in sort of random updates, we got updates from Google for Android. There is one bug that uh, sort of being pointed out here by a couple sources as particularly interesting. That's a critical vulnerability that could allow remote code execution. This is also interesting because it's in the Android uh, core system uh, component. 
And we do have an interesting vulnerability for Linksys E2000 routers. Uh, this vulnerability does allow attackers to retrieve the session ID for a currently logged in administrator. And with that, of course, an attacker may become administrator themselves. This vulnerability requires that the attacker has access to the admin interface. So first step, make sure your admin interface is not accessible from the outside. Second step, take your Linksys E2000 router and dispose of it responsibly as e-waste because there is no patch available for this device. Well, and this is it for today. So thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.